On our recent video about the latest OneNote updates, quite a few people stopped by to say that they prefer Notion and Obsidian instead of OneNote. It seems like there's many fans of Markdown note-taking out there, and I suspect that many of them are software developers, and they most likely enjoy taking volumes of highly structured notes. Good for them. Type notes are probably better than no notes. But before I get into the discussion about why OneNote is not a Markdown tool, and never should be, take a moment, grab a pen, and write down the words that you associate with note-taking. Hit pause and do it now. What is a note? Why do you need to take one? And what will you do with it? In my training work, I've asked thousands of people this question, why do you take notes? And in the context of meetings, the majority of people say they take notes to remember. It's followed by to capture action items, and lastly, to keep a record. Outside of the meetings context, you'd probably find similar themes. As Diego Forte says in his book, Building a Second Brain, keeping good notes is like keeping a separate brain. Memories, reminders, and details all keep together. We keep notes to reinforce and extend our memory. There are two parts to that statement. One is memory encoding, forming stronger memories. And the other is memory recall, being able to retrieve that memory and work with it again. So when we take notes, the primary reason is to remember things. It's a common mistake to think that we're not capable of remembering things. If you're struggling to remember things, then you might need to do some work on your memory and coding. The memory retrieval part from your notes is simply an assistant for you to access the memories that you've formed. It can never live up to the rich sensory memory that you encode into your brain. But the two things can work together to allow you to access and use that memory and to reinforce it. The good news is that there are some techniques that you can use to make this work more effectively. Our brains are visual and spatial powerhouses. It's estimated that up to 80% of the information absorbed by the brain is visual. And we know that space and place is also an important way to connect with your memories. If you've ever retraced your steps to find your keys, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And apps like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, companies like Coca-Cola, McDonald's and Apple they all understand very well that our brains are visual dominant and they use it against us every day to rate our time and our wallets. But note-taking allows you to take control of your visual and spatial brain and to use it to your advantage. And you can do that by taking notes with a pen. Why with a pen? Well, professors van der Meer and van der Weel from the University of Norway showed in two recent studies that writing with a pen on paper or on a computer activates different activity in the brain to typing. Writing creates brain activity in the visual, spatial, and motor control areas of the brain altogether, whereas the simple mechanical process of typing does not. When we take notes with a pen, simply highlighting key points or concepts, flagging ideas, and connecting things together, we're forming deep memories with visual, spatial, and motor connections. Professor Vandermeer put it this way, the use of pen and paper gives the brain more hooks to hang your memories on. So if we take notes to remember things, wouldn't it be best to bring our whole brain to the show? We would do that by taking notes with a pen, not a keyboard. Now, this is not to take away from tools like Notion and Obsidian, but those are very highly keyboard oriented tools. And typing is a simple mechanical action that doesn't fire much brain activity. Not only do tools like Notion and Obsidian require you to type, they want you to learn a bunch of codes, a markdown language in order to take notes. Now, software developers love these tools because they are coders. And as they say, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But to everyone else, this seems like a lot of work. We'll have to pay a high cognitive price, having to do the work of a computer, remembering codes and languages that are not natural to most of us. And what we get for doing that is a database of highly structured and organized notes. But is that actually what we need? And does it support our memory? Or does it replace our memory? Daniel Willingham, a well-respected learning scientist and professor of psychology, says that memory is the residue of thought. So one of the key ways to build memories with your notes is to think as you write the notes. And the trouble with Markdown is that you'll be thinking about what codes to type and not the subject matter of the notes. Even without the Markdown codes, many people can type at the speed of speech, so they can capture everything that is said on autopilot without thinking much about it. Memories aren't made this way. When we take handwritten notes, as van der Meer and van der Weel showed, we activate the occipital and parietal areas of the brain, areas that are associated with visual and spatial processing. 
That's because handwriting requires you to form shapes and plan for size and space. It also allows you to move freely in at least two dimensions so that you can arrange your thoughts on the page and connect those concepts together. It requires fine motor control to execute those complex, precise actions that move your arms, hands and fingers. And you'll be predicting and perceiving those movements and the resulting output back through your eyes and down your optic pathway. Fortunately, from a young age, most of us have learned how to draw and write, so we don't have to recall how to do it. It's a deeply embedded skill, but it is slower than typing. So you'll need to process and to think about what's important to write down. And all of that will help you to form pathways and ultimately rich, detailed memories. But the computer age is trying to shoehorn our visual dominant brains into a low activity mechanical state switching off our occipital and parietal areas. We've been duped into thinking that our brains are inferior to the computer brains. They are not. The memories in your brain are incredibly rich and detailed in ways that simple typed text can never be. Now I'm sure you're thinking, but I can't write as fast as I can type and I need an absolute record. I can't trust my memory 100%, so I must have those typed notes. And that's a good point. Record keeping is a very important part of note taking. And the good news is, we are now at an inflection point with technology. We no longer need a human to type everything that was said for the record. Transcripts in OneNote will allow you to record the audio of the meeting. It'll automatically process a transcript from the audio, attribute the individual speakers, and allow you to name them. It will link that transcript and the audio to the deep, memory-assistive notes that you took with your digital pen. From now on, the computer can take care of the simple mechanical work of typing what was said. Now, you can pay attention in meetings. Put the laptop out of the way, remove the physical barrier that prevents you from connecting with your colleagues and your customers. Now, you can think in meetings. Now, you can learn in meetings. Now, you can focus on capturing those action items. And you'll be able to find your way back to your rich human memories because the transcripts and the audio and the handwritten notes, well, they're all searchable. This point in time will mark a significant change for people who take advantage of these technology tools. So why is OneNote after 20 years still superior to Obsidian, Notion, and any other tool that requires you to type notes? Well, it's far from perfect, but OneNote is still the only tool that allows you to combine text, images, video, printed pages, Outlook meeting details, Outlook tasks, visual and spatial digital ink, and real-time audio transcripts onto the one creative and searchable canvas, brain and notebook, working together at last. If you wanna know more about how you can ride this new technology wave, make sure that you hit subscribe and the notification bell for our weekly Surface Pro and Microsoft 365 discussions.